Family is just everything to me. It means the world to me. I, I always feel like I don't see them enough, but uh, I try to get together every four to six weeks. I try. Either I go to Tampa or uh, they come to me, and we speak on the phone as well. And then I have my wonderful family in New Jersey who I speak to frequently. I have three wonderful gra uh, grandsons. Uh, Philip is 26, and twin boys that are 24, Stephen and Jeffrey, who I love and adore, and uh, Sue and Rob. And uh, Rob is my husband's son, and Sue is his wife. And uh, we're very connected, very bonded. I've known the children since they're babies, and uh, they're very much a part of my life. We struggled as young children, uh, getting through our everyday existence. It was, my dad was a, uh, a, would you believe, a New York cab driver, raising seven children and a wife, living in a three-room apartment in the Bronx. Uh, but there's a big age difference between myself and my other siblings. I have two older brothers, uh, Morty and Howie, who are Morty's 87, and Howie unfortunately just passed at the age of uh, 83, 81, right. And uh, then there was like a 10 year span, and then my mom had five children after that. I have a brother, Ruvain, who's 72, and my sister, Lila, who's 71, and uh, I have a twin brother and uh, God willing, I'll make it to the age of 70 in a couple of weeks, and I have a younger brother, Aaron. The only really good Morty story I have, because there's such a great age difference, is I remember my brother coming home from the Army with a knapsack on his back, and we all met him, uh, I guess, on the street, and I saw this man with his Army knapsack and we all screamed and yelled and ran into his arms. It was very exciting. How old were you then? Oh gosh, maybe five. Little. You were five years old. Uh, so that's what I remember. So where were you sitting when you first saw him? Probably on the stoop <laughs> in the on the in front of the apartment building mm -hmm. that we lived in at seven eighty five East 181st Street mm -hmm. in the Bronx that's still standing. I first started playing tennis in my early 20s, I was married to Alan Sobelman, living in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And my first teacher was Charlie Lender. And I played at the Tenafly um, Racket Club indoors. He was so good looking. He was so handsome. Nice, distinguished man. I think I had a crush on him. <laughs> Meyer and I were married, and he got us golf clubs, thinking we were going to play a, on a regular basis. But uh, we took some lessons, and he got ill, so we didn't really pursue it after that. And, but I had a nice golf bag and beautiful clubs. <laughs> How about the clothes? And all the clothes to go with it. I had all the clothes. <laughs> And What's more important, the clubs just, or the clubs? It's how you look. That's important. It's got to look good. You may not play very well, but then I put it down for a while, and we moved to Addison Reserve, which, of course, we have the golf membership, and um, I started taking it up again. But I always went back to tennis, so I never really got that great at golf. Right. I didn't take it as seriously, and uh, I kind of get mixed up with my, my strokes. Yeah. But I do enjoy it. I like being outside, and I like the social aspect of it. And my athleticism, I didn't know I had any. But I can't really tell you because my mom didn't do anything except take walks. And my dad drove a cab all day, so it could not have been for my parents. It was just, um, I think being a young mom got me uh, interested in, in staying fit and feeling good. I do have very fond memories. of walking with my mother. There, it wasn't often, it was few and far between, so it was very special, the few times we did walk together. And she had a seal coat, and I would just snuggle up and put my arm through hers, and we walked and we talked, and I always remember coming back feeling, 
feeling very, um, just very good and at peace. Yeah. It was always a nice conversation. And, uh, remember the walks we would take on the beach? Yeah, we took many walks on the beach on Siesta Key. Uh -huh. Many walks, we, we covered that area pretty good. Well, my group of friends, which are eight women, including myself, are called the Chillettes. Someone named it after the movie, The Big Chill, about all the guys getting together and getting crazy. Well, we named ourselves the Chillettes, and we have been meeting every year in the month of November uh, for as long as, I don't remember, I can't count the days, but when David got bar mitzvah, what year? 84. 1984. Uh, the girls had such a great time at that affair because they all left New Jersey without their husbands. <laughs> and they did not stop cackling from the moment they got on the airplane until the moment they left. We had the best time. They, we were living in Sarasota. They stayed at the Hyatt Hotel. And um, they were just free and happy and excited for me and excited for you and the family. And they were such a big support to me. And now I'm gonna get teary. Alan Sobelman is your father and the father of my other two daughters, Dana and Gail. He was the love of my life. We were introduced by, well, this gets a little convoluted, but through Naomi, who was married to my brother, Howie, and she was also Alan Sobelman's first cousin. So Naomi introduced me to Alan Sobelman, who was her first cousin, when I was 16 years old. That was it, I liked him a lot, we dated. What was your first date? My first date? I think he took me to see El Greco in the Bronx. What is that? Um, it's a um, Spanish flamingo dancers. <laughs> flamingo dancers in a stadium. I was really, I liked them. That, that did it for that you? That did it. <laughs> Cucaracha, cucaracha. <laughs> hey, everyone's got their <laughs> He was a nice day. He was very nice to me. I was attracted to him. He was attracted to me. We dated a lot. How old Went was he? To, uh, six years older. Yeah, we got married at 18, married at a eight. month before my uh, 19th birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, I had Gail when I was 19. I gave birth 10 months later. <laughs> See, I got married in November and, um, of 63, of 62. And uh, Gail was born in October, October 1st of 63. So when I announced to my mom that I was pregnant, she went, hmm, let's see, you got married in November, and she started counting the months. <laughs> uh, whew, I was safe. <laughs> I was safe. But, was she happy? Yeah, she was very happy. Uh, I moved to the east coast of Florida, to Fort Lauderdale, with the idea of starting a new life for myself. Gail and Ted were married and living in Tampa, and Dana had her own apartment in Sarasota, and David was in school in, in um, Gainesville. So the kids were pretty independent at that point, so I thought it was time for Goldie to make a new life for herself and start anew. When I moved to Fort Lauderdale, went job hunting and landed a great job at Bloomingdale's in Boca. And they put me into the living department. I got my training for a couple of weeks and um, I worked with a very nice group of people, learned how to use their computer and how to be aggressive in sales because it was a commission. It was a draw against commission. Then, as luck would have it, one afternoon, a gentleman came in and I was busy with a customer. So, um, but I really wanted to help this gentleman because um, 
Well, for several reasons. A, he looked nice. And secondly, men tend to spend more money than women. So I really needed to get the sale. <laughs> well, I'm being honest. So, um, so I approached him and I said, hi, my name is Goldie. I would love to help you if you don't mind waiting a few minutes. And he said, sure. So all the other salespeople approached him and may I help you, may I help you? And no, I'm waiting for Goldie. So as soon as I was finished, I went up to him and introduced myself again. And, and he told me that he had just moved to uh, Boca. He had bought an apartment and he needed a whole new set of linens for um, three rooms. I didn't hear from him for a while. And then one afternoon, <clears throat> I'm sitting home. It was a Sunday morning, actually, and I'm reading the Sunday paper. And I get a call and she said, Hi, my name is Carol Lang. I'm Meyer's daughter. I just got off the phone with my father, and Goldie, he is just absolutely heartsick. He really wants to see you. He really likes you. But, you know, he just made this promise to this girl, and please understand there's nothing really between them. So I spoke to her for a while. She was very friendly. And I said, just tell your father it's okay. He could call me. So 10 minutes later, Meyer called. And you could hear he had this huge sigh of relief. Do you love this, lo this love story, right? <laughs> he was such a good guy. So he said <laughs> he was so glad that, that he called. And um, uh, gosh, about two hours later, the doorbell rings. And I get two dozen red roses from Meyer just to show how much he cared and how happy he was that I agreed to see him. And that was it. That's, what, that's my Maya story. I, I got so lucky and so blessed with, uh, with his kids. Um, firstly, with uh, Robbie, his oldest son, is married to Sue. And they have the three boys, which I mentioned earlier in the conversation. So, <clears throat> uh, so the boys were little. I think the twins were two, and Philip was uh, four. When I first met them, it was over Hanukkah week in December, and they were visiting Grandpa. And I got to meet them, and um, they were great. They were just great. Um, and they're still great. To this day, I love them and adore them. And uh, I always say it's very unusual for people in my situation to be so connected to, uh, to this great family. And then uh, Maya has a daughter, uh, Carol, who unfortunately is no longer with us. She had a lot of serious health issues for many, many years. <clears throat> and uh, she passed away a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, I stay close to them. I try to. Yeah. I, I, do, I do love them and appreciate them. Yeah. It's, it's an added blessing to know that Sue and Robbie are in my life and the boys. My little, yeah. my little Pitskalas. They're sweet. My little Henry and Mabry. They're the best. I like when I walk out, when I get out of the car in front of your house in Tampa, they come running into my arms, so happy to see me. I can just melt and I get the biggest hugs and the biggest squeezes and, and I feel so loved by them and blessed that they're in my life. And of course, my Tanner, as my son picked the best, the best wife imaginable. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better daughter in law. She's beautiful, she's charming, she's a wonderful, wonderful mother and a phenomenal wife. And my, the choice my son made couldn't have been better. She's a beautiful woman, beautiful. I would tell them to uh, live life to the fullest, enjoy themselves, stay healthy and be good people. Be good to everyone. You never have any expectations and you'll never be disappointed. I live by that.